Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're dealing with a problem trying to figure out what is the amount of energy we can get out of a coal plant. Here really it's just a matter of applying the first law of thermodynamics, but not for a closed system, just in general, just in general terms, just applying different uh, unit conversion techniques and understanding that we really can't create or destroy any energy. So this is problem 6.25 and it reads like so. A coal burning steam power plant produces a net power of 300 megawatts with an overall thermal efficiency of 32%. The actual gravimatic air fuel ratio in the furnace is calculated to be 12 kilograms of air per kilogram of fuel. The heating value of coal is 28,000 kilojoules per kilogram. Determine A, the amount of coal consumed during a 24 hour period and B, the rate of air flowing through the furnace. So this is a problem that we don't really need any, you know, equations or understanding of anything deeper than the idea that we can't really create or destroy energy. What we do in a um, coal burning power plant is that we put some, you know, mass in, we burn up that mass. As we burn up that mass, we create um, steam, that steam pushes a turbine and that turbine outputs some work. So what we're doing, right, the very core of what we're doing in a steam power plant is we're putting some mass in, we're burning that, so we're transforming chemical energy into mechanic energy, which is being um, in the form of the, the steam moving and pushing this uh, turbine, right, so it's a um, kinetic energy, which we then transform with a generator from the uh, kinetic energy back to electric energy. That's the whole idea, right? This power plant, it outputs a total of 300, 300 megawatts, right? 300 megawatts. And it has an efficiency as per the problem statement, and let's change colors for this. It has an efficiency of 32%, okay? So that means that of all the energy that I put inside this coal power plant, 32% of that chemical energy available is going to be transformed into our net power output, right? So in other words, we can go straight into calculating how much, you know, equivalent power we need to put in to be able to get the three, the 300 megawatts out, right? We also know the, or give, they give us the, um, what do they call it? The heating value for coal heating value for coal as 28 I'm going to go ahead and say it's megajoules instead of kilojoules right so I'm going to eliminate this these 3000 here so megajoules per kilogram of coal okay so this is you know the original all the energy available in the coal if we were to get it all then we would be able to get more than 300 here with the same amount of coal um, and there's also a air to fuel ratio of 12. So let's just say this is the fuel to air ratio, just call it far. And this is 12 kilograms of air for every kilogram of fuel. Okay, so for every one kilogram of fuel that I put into my plant here, I need to put 12 times that amount of air to make this burn the way that it has to. Mm, I think that's good enough. That's good enough for us. What we're trying to calculate here is the amount of coal consumed. So know that it's the amount of coal consumed. So you want an answer in uh, mass, right? So kilograms or tons or something to that extent. And to be able to do that, we're going to obviously relate the total amount needed of coal and uh, the total energy that is outputted here, right? So what we can start is, is okay, let's th see. In one day, we have 24 hours, and we are, and that's equivalent to, so in one day, 24 hours, 
which is equivalent to 86 400 seconds if you don't trust me just multiply 24 by 60 and then by 60 again okay and then our input is going to be you know the amount of energy whatever we get as an output here whatever we get in terms of um, output of this machine is related to the efficiency right like we said so we can say that we have a certain amount of power in our inputs and multiply that by the efficiency of the power plant and then we get our output right no tricks here this is you know just basic idea the other thing the other way to think about this is um, that our efficiency is just the amount that's outputted in respect to how much we had to input right so no nothing fancy there so that means that my power input my power input is simply the output divided by the efficiency right so in this case here we have uh, 300 right so 300 megawatts and our efficiency like we said in the beginning is 32 percent so if we divide we see that the input of this power plant here has to be 937.5 megawatts all right so we need this amount of we need to put in this amount of energy this amount of power i should say to output this amount of power okay so know that we can now just by knowing those two numbers we can now calculate what's the amount of heat that's rejected from this system here what's the amount of heat rejected that is energy that we could not obtain in the form of electric energy right so it's just the difference between 300 and the 900 so that's 600 and 37.5 this amount of megawatts is what we're rejecting it's quite a bit right cool and then the next thing to note is that um, this is power and i have this related to energy so i need to relate back my power back to energy so that i can use this value here to calculate the amount of coal that i need right and we know that uh power is just the rate well, like this power is just the rate at which energy changes with time right we know by the way, we know that a watt is the same thing as a joule per second, right? So therefore, that means that if I want to find out what is the um, energy related to this, I know this is a 24-hour period that I'm interested in. So therefore, I just need to relate those two things, right? And that's exactly why I had this conversion here. Okay, so if power is related to energy and time, if I'm wanting to find energy, I can relate that, well, obviously the right thing to here, do here is integrate. I'm going to integrate uh, in respect to the T and then delta E, etc., etc. So if I want to find out the energy, then I'm going to get the power and multiply by the amount of time elapsed, right? So in this case, it's 24 hours. We do the amount of input is this guy here, so 937.5 mega watts multiplied by 24 and if i do 24 hours here i'm going to have a problem right because megawatts is joules per second let's go ahead and do that it's the same thing as joules per second so that's why this doesn't cut so what i need to do is multiply by 60 and 60 again and i'm going to get the values that i got there with which is 86 400 seconds and then guess what happens unit wise seconds and seconds go away and i'm left with a unit in megajoules um big number obviously get 8.1 8.1 times 10 to the seventh 8.1 times 10 to the seventh and that is in megawatts which is great because if this is megawatts now i can relate to this piece of information that i had here which is the amount of energy that coal carries right <clears throat> so again i'm not you know using any equations per se i'm just noting that if my amount, if my amount of energy coal carries if is 28 megajoules per kilogram of coal, and I'm interested in the kilogram of coal, all I need to do is take, if I want to know what's the mass of coal, all I'm going to do is take the amount of energy required. I'm going to divide that by the C of coal. Why do I do that? Well, again, I'm just looking at the units here, right? I'm going to take megajoules here, and I'm going to divide by megajoules per kilograms of coal. Guess what happens? boom boom and i'm left with kilograms of coal on the top there right so that's all the logic that i'm using here so i need about 8.1 times 10 to the seventh mega joules and i'm feeding that with something that has 28 mega joules for every kilogram of it 
thing that it, of matter that I put in there, right? So like I said, these guys are going to go away. And I'm going to be left with the value of 2.893. Let's go ahead and do that 2.9, right? Just for the sake of it, 2, approximately 2.9 times 10 to the 6th kilograms of coal. You don't need the of coal there, but, you know, just to make it neat. Okay. So this is the amount of coal we would need to be able to power this guy for 24 hours. And that's the answer of part A, right? <clears throat> part B then asks us, what is the rate of air flowing through the furnace? Well, that's easy, right? Because we know the ratio between the amount of coal and the amount of air. So if we know the amount of coal, we know the amount of, the amount of air, okay? So note that this is asking us, what is the rate of air flowing through the furnace, not the amount per se, right? So they're not asking us, oh, what is the amount of kilograms of air? No, that's not what they want. They want the rate. So they want kilograms per unit of time. I'm going to go with seconds because it's CSI, right? So I need to find what is the amount of kilograms per second. So I'm going to start simple and I'm going to say, okay, I know the amount of coal that I need. I'll grab this number. I know the amount of coal that I need. I know this is for a 24 hour period. Okay, so let's start with it simple. Let's say, oh, this is part B. Part B. So I know that in 24 hours, I need 2.9 times 10 to the 6 kilograms of coal, right? And also that. The ratio between coal and air is or the F A R, right? The F A R is twelve. Uh, was it twelve? Just double check that. Yeah, twelve, right? Twelve kilograms of air per feet, right? So the F A R is twelve kilograms air per kilograms of coal. So that means that for every one kilogram of coal, and I have a lot of kilograms of coal, I need twelve kilograms of air. So therefore, so therefore, let's change colors. So therefore. I need 12 times the amount, 12 times uh, the mass of coal. And air, right? So I'm just going to take literally the mass of air. It's just going to be 12 times the 2.9 times 10 to the sixth. And that's going to be, if you want to, you know, if you want to do this with the units, we're saying that 12, uh, let's change colors, 12 kilograms of air per kilograms of coal, coal, multiplied by the, this guy, which is kilograms of coal, right? Kilograms of coal. So we're doing it step by step slowly, and you see that these guys go away, and we're left with the amount of, um, the, mass of air that's needed, right? <clears throat> Don't need to calculate this, but if we need it, if we wanted to calculate it very badly, we would get that this is 3.47 times 10 to the seventh kilograms, okay? But we want it as a rate, and we know that this is for a 24-hour period, right? 24-hour period, and we know how many seconds we have in the 24-hour period. So assuming this is a constant flow, right? So assuming constant flow, the um, flow rate, mass flow rate of air, no, the dot here to say it's a flow rate, will be the 3.47 times 10 to the seventh kilograms divided by the amount of seconds that elapses in a 24 hour period, which we calculated before to be 86,400. Okay, so this is going to give me, and again, this is assuming a constant flow rate, right? So this gives me about 400 and 1.706. So let's go ahead and say this is 400 and 1.8 kilograms per second. So that's the flow rate of air required in this coal power plant. All right, so like I said, no tricks here, just simple unit analysis. Um, 
calculate the amount of coal needed for a power plant, calculate the amount of airflow needed. Um, don't forget, coal power plants are bad, evil. <laughs> and uh, I say this only half jokingly. We want to move away from coal power plants as fast as possible and into renewable energy to avoid climate chaos. Um, at the same time, we can't just do that today. We need to build up the infrastructure for that. We need to ensure that you know, workers have a safety net and are, um, are led through the transition from one economy, which is fossil fuel-based, coal-based today, into one that's renewable-based. So, you know, we have a lot of work to do. Coal power plants are still, they still have a place in the world, but we want to make that place smaller and smaller as fast as possible. All right, I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. And if this video was helpful, consider liking it, and we'll talk soon.